Hi, in this video we will be studying minor connectors. Now if you remember the components of a cast partial denture, there is major connector and minor connector, direct retainer, indirect retainer, occlusal and other rest seats and then you have the denture base and the acrylic teeth. So the function of a minor connector is to connect all these exclusive small small components to the major connector. So a minor connector will connect the direct retainer, the occlusal rest, the indirect retainer, everything to the major connector. By definition, it is the connecting link between the major connector or the base of, of a removable partial denture and the other units of the prosthesis such as clasp, indirect retainer and occlusal rest. So let's have a look at the functions of minor connector. A minor connector like the definition says is going to join, connect the units of the prosthesis to the major connector. So what are these units? You have the clasp, rest and the retainers. The second is functional stresses. So it is going to transfer the functional stresses from the prosthesis to the abutment and the abutment to the prosthesis. So it is a two way thing. It is going to dissipate the forces. It is not going to concentrate any specific force to any specific tooth. It is going to just nullify the effect of forces by distributing it over the abutments on the teeth, on the mucosa, on the tissues, on the arch. So that is the function of a minor connector. Now one thing again very important is that it is rigid. You cannot have a flexible minor connector. If it is not rigid, it will not be able to dissipate these forces. A minor connector is the only part of the RPD that contacts the guide plane of the abutment. This is important for the exam. Which part of the cast partial denture is going to connect the guide plane of the abutment? So only a minor connector is going to uh, connect that. A minor connector arises at 90 degrees or right angle from the major connector. That means if you see this image, this angle has to be 90 degree. This is 90 degree. This is 90 degree. So a minor connector is going to be at an, at an angle of 90 degree to the major connector so that the gingival crossing is abrupt and covers little tissue so that there is no ill effect of this connection to the gingiva. So what are the types of minor connectors? Now basically there are four types of minor connectors. The first is minor connector that joins the clasp assembly to the major connector. So this is for the direct retainer. So if you have a clasp then one joining it to the major connector. So this is the minor connector here which is joining the clasp assembly to the major connector. Second is joining the indirect retainer or auxiliary rest to the major connector. So here if you see this is the indirect retainer and it is going to connect that to the major connector. Then minor connector that joins the denture base with the major connector. Here you will have your artificial teeth and the acrylic resin. So this is connecting to the major connector here. So that is your minor connector that joins the denture base with the major connector. And lastly, minor connector that serves as an approach arm for bar clasp. So in gingivally approaching clasps, this is the minor connector which is going to come from underneath the gingiva and take support from the tooth. So in direct retainers, you can have from the clasp assembly or from the bar clasp. So these are the different types of minor connectors. So let's have a look at the different minor connectors which are included in the distal extension cast partial denture base. For a maxilla, uh, cast, maxillary cast partial denture, you will choose a ladder or a loop type of design where you have this kind of struts. And in maxillary arch, the minor connector should extend to the entire edentular syringe up to the maxillary tuberosity. So you are going to cover the maxillary cast partial denture framework up to the maxillary tuberosity, not on the tuberosity. In mandible, again, you will use op open lattice or a ladder type of a minor connector. This is basically the minor connector on which the acrylic is going to come, on which the artificial teeth is going are going to come. So in mandibular arch, minor connector should cover or extend to the two-third length of the edentular syringe. Okay. In maxillary, it should extend up to the maxillary tuberosity. In mandible, two-third of the edentular syringe. Now what are tissue stops? Tissue stops, as the name suggests, is going to stop on the tissues. You want the cast partial denture to not swing here and there. It has to be oriented to the same part of the denture base. So tissue stops are these squarish kind of stops which are fabricated in the cast partial denture. The size of this is 2 mm square. So these are prepared on all distal extension partial dentures to stabilize the framework during acrylic resin packing and preventing the distortion of framework. So always remember that there is going to be a layer of acrylic going to cover that is going to cover this minor connector because the teeth are going to come on that. So the teeth and acrylic and the metal, they are all going to be one unit in this area. So for that, 
you need to provide a tissue stop so that the acrylic flows exactly to the height that it has to flow. So these tissue stops are very important and they are 2 mm square. They are prepared by removing that much area with the relief wax or they can be placed directly on the wax pattern. So this is an important consideration that has to be remembered in distal extension cast partial dentures. Now let's have a look at the meritus prep facts from this topic. The minor connectors, three different forms of minor connectors that can be employed. Uh, first is lattice type, second is mesh type and third is bead type. So the lattice type is actually the one which has struts. So you have your distal extension base and then you have the struts or bars that are going to come along the ridge. So two long struts of metal are placed buckle and the lingual slopes. The long struts are connected by smaller struts. So you have longer struts and smaller struts. So this is your long struts and these are your smaller struts. The long strut is made up of 16 gauge wax and short struts are made up of 12 gauge wax which is thicker. Relief is given in between the struts and the ridge by tissue stops for acrylic flow. The tissue stops that we already discussed are prepared here on the on the extension, on the posterior most extension of the minor connector. The next type of minor connector that we will see is mesh work. So mesh is an overlap of longitudinal uh, metal elements like this. So sheet of metal placed over the crest of residual ridge will result in small holes for retention. It is mostly used when there are multiple teeth to be replaced. So if there are multiple modification areas then you will use mesh. Retention to denture base is less because the holes are small. So because the holes here are small, the retention to the denture base is lesser compared to that in a lattice. Now lattice is also known as open construction. So you have to remember both the terminologies and mesh is only this one single terminology or mesh work. Third and the last type of uh, minor connector that can be used as a denture base is the bead wire or nail head type. Bead wire or nail head are three different terms and they are interchangeably used in different textbooks. So a bead major connector is like a bead or a nail bed or a nail head on a metal component. So there is this metal plate on which there are struts coming out of the metal plate. So lines the edentulous ridge directly without any relief. It sits directly on the edentulous ridge without any relief. Acrylic denture base is attached to the outer surface of the minor connector and retention is obtained by the projection of the metal on the superior surface. So on the intaglio surface, on the impression surface, it will stick directly on the tissue there is no relief there and on the upper side, on the tooth side, there are these small projections of metal which are going to allow bonding of the acrylic. It is going to increase the surface area for the bonding of the acrylic and it is indicated for tooth supported dentures with well healed ridges where frequent relining and rebasing is not anticipated. Obviously because there is no relief, there is no space between the metal and the tissue. So if there is a need for reline, you cannot do it. So it is indicated only where the ridges are very well healed and where relining and rebasing is not expected from that case. Now let's have a look at the frequently asked questions from minor connectors. Minor connectors is important because it is a rigid element which is going to connect it to the connect all the other elements to the major connector. So that has to be remembered thoroughly and the angle form between the minor connector and the major connector to which it joins has to be 90 degrees. So in your exam you may have questions which ask you to uh, 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 whether it's perpendicular or parallel or at the same angle. So you have to choose perpendicular because that is what 90 degrees is. So interchangeably the terms can be used for your questions. Now open construction and lattice both are the same words. Open construction is described as a word in Stewart's removable prosthodontic book and lattice is used in McCracken. So both these words don't get confused. They are indicated for distal extension cases because they are easy to reline and good with they have a good mechanical bond with the acrylic. So in a long span bridge, in a long span cast partial denture, you can use open uh, construction or lattice. And then the size of tissue stops, which is indicated in distal extension. This is the tissue stop. The size of this is two millimeters square and open construction. The long struts are made, made up of 16 gauge. This is a long strut, which is going to border the uh, the minor connector and the short struts are in between them. So they are going to be 12 gauge. Then the disadvantage of mesh minor connector, mesh are smaller holes here. So it is difficult for acrylic to bond directly to that. So it is indicated for smaller edentulous areas, bead or nail head, that kind of a construction should be limited to well healed ridges 
and where uh, you are not anticipating relining because there is no relief provided in this kind of a minor connector. So these are the kind of questions that can come from a minor connector topic. I hope this video was useful to you. Thank you for watching.